Welcome to Monday News number 36, the first one of 2020. And last year we released Fresh Plastic version 4. A lot of new things, new products, new websites, new machines. Uh, all of that information is online. So really good to hear and see all you guys really like version 4. We never really know, it's been on our head for like one year. So putting it online is always a bit of a tricky thing. Um, but we get a lot of good positive feedback. Thanks Jerry. We also get a lot of constructive feedback actually of things we missed or improved or we should do better. So we have one Discord channel where you can share these messages to us. So we are there, the whole team is there to listen and improve it. So we also already released one um, updated version of our download kit and starter kits because a few files were missing and it was a bit messy. So thanks for sharing the feedback. A few interesting facts about the launch. The download kit, the main one is downloaded over 2000 times. The starter kits altogether 8000 times. So that could result in a lot of new Fresh Plastic workspaces. We have our first community uploaded how-tos from Fresh Plastic Estonia that makes a bag from old bags. Kunstof Schmiede on how to run a workspace and give you tips and tricks on what they've learned throughout the years. And copy paste has a how-to on how to store your plastic in an old water container, which is very useful. And it's really cool actually to see this so we can learn back from you guys. So make sure to properly document your how-tos. We have over 20 events created and 250 pins are added to the map. So let me actually address this one because this has been a very often requested question. So we used to have a big fresh plastic map with over 12,000 pins on there of workspaces, but also people that want to get started. Um, but we kind of deleted that. It's still online, but we don't use it anymore. So we often ask like, why? Uh, so the main reason actually is that although there were a lot of pins on the maps and it looks impressive and it's cool to share because you see this global community around the world, but to be fair, a lot of pins were created maybe one and a half year ago. The people are not active anymore. They are hard to reach. Uh, so in a way it, it showed sort of a, a not fair image or an honest image of what the community was really like because it was not sort of updated or maintained. And besides that, it felt uh, very individualistic. So if you would visit a local place, you need to get in touch with every individual there uh, to send them a message to connect. And then the next person, again, needs to get in touch with every individual which feels very inefficient. So that's why we decided to focus more on community points so that you can set up a community point and everyone comes there together. So the moment you plan to not be in a project anymore, the community point still lives. Um, so it can sort of move on without having one individual being responsible for it. So I think that's overall something we did for version four to really focus more on groups and communities instead of individuals. And actually in the coming months, the community platform is gonna be quite a fun and important tool and because that's where we're gonna generate a lot of information, where you guys can share what you guys are doing, where we can see the community growing on the map. And uh, there's actually quite some things we need to do to maintain this, to make sure it doesn't become like a spammy, chaotic place. But let me show you a bit how that works. So for this, I need to introduce you to Catbot. And C is our automated system that makes sure all the spam and moderation is filtered on the platform to make sure the place stays nice, clean, proper. Um, so yeah, Catbot takes care of this and it's located uh, right here in the studio. Yeah. It's an AI algorithm. So here we have Catbot. Hello. <laughs> hey. So she manages uh, the online community platform. So we get a notification in, she checks if it's valid and then uh, get in touch to improve the quality of it. Yes, that's what I do. And I was thinking, so I did this a while ago with um, Mattia. We had an interview. I'm not good in doing interviews, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, Super improvised, yes, totally improvised. As always. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what do you like about Fresh Plastic? Um, okay. Uh. <laughs> He's been part of the team for a very long time to ask some questions. So I figured maybe we can do that with you because you've been around for a while, but no one I think really knows you besides from the community news. Sure. So <laughs> up for some questions. <laughs> Need to take off my shoes in the Colosseum. That's true. Wait, let me give you the mic. Hey. 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 <laughs> um, so you're a catbot? I'm catbot. Hey, okay, cool. That's how they call me. Yes, why? Because I work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And what is your real name? Uh, Katarina. Mm. Anneke. You? <laughs> You're from? I'm from Germany. Mm. 
And um, what did you study? I studied industrial design in Munich. How old are you? I'm 26. Mm. Do you feel like 26? Sometimes. Sometimes I feel younger, but I do feel like 26. I also feel 26, but I'm not 26. <laughs> and what's your favorite food when it's warm? <laughs> <laughs> um, like a very warm day, what would you like to eat? A nice green salad with clementine. Mm, nice. <laughs> how did you how did you get involved with fresh plastic and how long ago is that? How long have you been part of it? Okay, so uh, I guess like a, around three and a half years ago I started researching into uh, plastic waste and recycling and that was in Kenya. I did, did a research semester in Kenya. Um, and while I was researching, I found out about precious plastic and kind of dived into that topic. Um, but when I really got in touch uh, and like took it like, li a little bit more seriously that I want to get involved is when I saw that you guys uh, were planning something in Kenya um, with precious plastic. So this kind of me being involved in Kenya and in the topic plastic recycling uh, already was uh, the trigger for me to then reach out and um, yeah, get involved. So why plastic? Why, why were you there working on plastic? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you, what's, the, what's the trigger? Um, I knew that I wanted to like d uh, do something in Kenya, first of all, because my family is there and I knew that there, was, there were a lot of problems and um, I wanted to tackle uh, a bigger problem um, than just the like little things we tend to do as a designer in Europe. Um, and plastic was kind of the, the, the material which or the, the problem where I felt like as an industrial designer you are actually responsible of that, like very much responsible of that problem as well because you produce it as an like you you're mm. it's in your hands to produce something and choose the material for that. So now uh, we finished the project in Kenya a while ago. Uh, you're still around with fresh plastic. What do you do nowadays here? What's, what's your work? Uh, yeah, I've d I do a little bit of many things, um, but mainly it's all connected to uh, uh, community work, uh, researching and kind of stalking the community, what they're up to, uh, and um, gathering it and putting it together um, on our platforms and websites and making sure that the websites and the information we share is kind of uh, di digestible and uh, brings it all together. So basically community work and websites, platform and a little bit of organization, no part. So if they do their documentation better, you have less work to do, right? Exactly. <laughs> Good documentation. Okay, and what do you think is exciting for the coming months for Fresh Plastic? If, if with all the uh, new information we release, what do you think is going to be cool or interesting to follow? What's yeah, uh, for sure seeing some of the big machines built. Um, for me, especially the sheet press, I would say. Um, and, and seeing more cool patterns and, and materials being produced with the sheet press um, and seeing how that works in different countries actually i'm very curious about that and of course um, seeing the platform being filled up with uh, new pins but especially then seeing like more networks coming up mm. um, and how to's because there is a lot of things out there which can be documented and which i've seen already as well and now that there is this tool of of documenting things properly uh, yeah. or more easily, I'm very um, happy to see more how-tos coming in. Agree, agree. Okay, and anything you wanted to mention to the community? I guess you talk with them more often on the camera, uh, on YouTube, but I don't know, maybe there's something, uh, maybe not. Um, yeah, I could say uh, keep on doing what you do, it's very inspiring and uh, go on the platforms because the platforms are very inspiring. <laughs> Um, and do it properly. It's super nice. Um, sometimes it's it's kind of maybe you don't see that if you share something now that this is actually that this reaches someone or helps someone else, but it actually does. And everyone learns from what everyone else uh, shares, um, and that's very powerful. Um, and even better if you do it properly, because then it's um, yeah more people will see it and find it and, and like it, it and understand it. Cool. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so before we go, actually, um, it's also 2020, which means a new year. Um, and we just finished version four. So in a way we're now free and that's how we usually do it. I'm tired. I spent too much time on pressure plastic. I want to do something completely different. Um, but this time, actually, we have a team of people like Katrina, but a few others that are really going to be more the Pressure Plastic core team. So people that keep on developing, keep on doing projects, keep on doing collaborations here in the workspace. Um, so it's a bit of a different structure for uh, what we usually work like. Um, and the upside is also it could actually generate some income for the project, because although we have you guys supporting on Patreon, which is awesome, it's not enough to fully sustain the project and all the people and all the development we want to do. So next to Patreon, we would sort of have this uh, more precious plastic team that can really take on projects and collaborations. So not sure how that's going to go. It's the first time we're going to try it out. So we'll just keep you updated in the monthly news uh, how this new structure is going to go and also the projects we do. Meanwhile, I would still take a break on precious plastic so I have some time to think about other stuff like story hopper videos. So we're currently in Berlin, super nice weather. I just bought some food in this old supermarket, no, old gas station, now it's a supermarket. Because I'm making a trip from uh, Moscow to China. It's the longest train ride in the world. Because I still wanted to make this video on how to s travel sustainable, whether you should take the plane, the train. So I have one week full time in the train to figure it out and make that video. So uh, on my way now and next month that video should be ready. Yeah.